Hi! Today I thought I would like to paint this wonderful red hot poker, the Nupfia, that is growing in my garden. Love these flowers because they're just quite silly really. So that's what I want to, to paint and I want to paint it in a very clear and quite stylized way to get to really concentrate on the lovely red to orange to yellow and green that's going on there. So I'm going to paint it big because I have a lovely big long frame that I want to put this in. So I know I want to paint it on a half sheet of watercolour paper long and thin. I've done a little sketch. <laughs> this is my thumbnail sketch and I decided, I basically I drew a single flower and worked out where I wanted to cut it off. So I'm going to have it going off the page because that gives a real impact to this very structural flower. Really good idea to do some compositional scribbles. Doesn't have to be beautiful as you can see but it helps you get it right. So here is my very long thin piece of paper. You can see that I've sketched very cleanly the um, layers and layers of, of the little bracts. I've done this darker than I would normally just so that you can see it on the film. And then I'm going to start painting at the top and I'm going to have to move it until we get down to the bottom. So my plan is to keep it very clean, very transparent and then I'm going to use some a very fine black pen uh, to add a bit of detail at the end. As always, I reserve the right to change my mind as I go through. If I feel the watercolour is doing what I want it on its own, I might not need the pen, but my initial plan is, is to do that. I'm looking closely at this and I can see a lot of pink in that orange um, and the further away buds, again I can see sort of pinky purpley colour, there's definitely purple at the top before it goes in into the, that pinky orange. It's really worth looking closely and thinking what colours can I see and what do I want to exaggerate. Once we get down to these yellows there's a lot of green in it before it comes into the stem. Now I have got loads of palettes here with lots of leftover bits of paint in so I'm going to be using lots of those because I hate to waste um, paint but let's have a think what is missing from there I think we need a bit I've got some purples I've got some oranges mm, that's a horrible yellow not right I've got the um, quin gold in there let's have a look what's missing Mm, actually this pyrrole orange is lovely, uh, should have a clean spot for that, put it in the middle there. It doesn't look great neat out of the tube but it's got a real pinky tinge to it. So I've got some burnt sienna in there, that is perylene maroon, that's going to be handy. That quin yellow is going to be, or quin gold sorry, it's good. So that's no good at all, I don't think. Maybe a tiny touch of it. And here I've got some olive green, which I think will be useful for the uh, bottom. Hmm, what else? Maybe a better, clearer yellow. This is Gamboge. This is Rembrandt. Looks a bit like baby poo when it comes out of the tube. Not a great colour, but... When you add water, it's a really lovely transparent um, yellow. So I think that will be good for me. Right. Um, oh, that's got a bit of a colour actually. This is Potter's Pink, which is a strange mix. So what I'm going to do. 
start with each bud painting wet onto to dry paper and come down there and the idea is I'm rather than getting everything to bleed into each other as I might normally do I'm going to try and keep things quite clean but I'm dropping further colour into the top there and here in the stem I'm dropping a little bit of purple in there because I can definitely see some purple when it dries or is getting drier I'm going to put some purple in here so even though I'm trying to keep everything quite clean I do want lots of variation and if I want a lighter area I'll take that thirsty brush and pull out some of the colour to get the shape in the bud okay quite happy with that so this potted pink I wasn't expecting to use that and I happen to have it in my uh, palette so that's why not really don't have to stick to accurate colours. If you want to emphasise a colour, zhuzh it up in any way, um, that's fine because it's your painting. I'm just putting some, I think that's cadmium orange in there just to make that a little bit brighter. Again, I might just put a little bit of purple in the shadow, purple and orange, rather a nice combo. This may well actually be off the edge by the time it goes under the mountain tip, but you know. So then I'm going to come down to the next bud and really I'm looking at the overall shape uh, here because I know I'm going to put some pen and that might uh, then put in things like the, the lines that I can see on these buds. I'm hoping that I will be able to get shot on most of the, the pencil marks because I don't watch those showing through. I rather like that little line, I wonder if that will stay, it's very pretty. I think I might need a slightly brighter red to come in. Maybe not, don't know. Let's see this pearl um, orange that I was telling you about. So we'll come over here. I do want those two to join together just for a bit of fun. Having said I don't I'm not gonna merge everything. Look at the colour of that. That's pearl orange. It's got a real pinky glow to it. Now as I'm looking more closely I can see there's a bit of green in um, the ends sort of here where that joins the stem so I think it might be quite nice to put some of that in and you can see it pushing into the the orange. Yeah. I'm just referring back all the time to my um, flower. Um, then when you start to work down from the top you start to get buds coming out at you and this is where you've got to really observe the shapes well because they're no longer what you would assume them to be. They're foreshortened so you need to observe what the overall shape is. I'm going to bring a bit more of that green in. Just so I can see it. When these are dry I'll go back and tuck more buds behind to get that layer of, um, well, it's almost like a bottle brush isn't it, um, the shapes. 
when this is a bit drier I think it's still a little wet just to lift out some soft highlights so maybe just go back into that one so I'm working quite quickly I don't need to um I'm using a decent sized brush, not a huge one. could use a bigger brush if I wanted to, but just enough so that I can get uh, a good sweep of colour. I don't want to see any brush marks in there as such. We can do that. I've done a little bit more, but not a huge amount, and I've just let this dry. So that's the stage I'm up and look, there's still lots more to go. So I've, what I've also tried to do is rub out as much of the pencil line as possible. Now sometimes you can rub it out through the paint and sometimes you can't. And today is a can't day, which is really annoying, but never mind. So what I want to start doing, having done some of effectively the front edge of the flower, is I want to put some of these back bits in and I'm going to exaggerate the colour difference a bit more to hopefully get these to pop out so I'm going to put more purple in the the back ones maybe I mean this is very orange I think maybe a tiny bit more red so I need to find because uh, I've got this um say perlin maroon in there maybe something that's just a, a slightly cleaner red I have no idea, look at the state of that tube, what red that is. Um, it's a mystery. So, carmine maybe? Who knows? Anyway, so, again, observing, observing, observing. I am going to start putting in some of these uh, that are a little further back. I don't want to go too strong or do I? Maybe I do. That may be too strong. Just tucking the bud behind. Again just keeping everything quite clean. Hmm. Don't think that's great if you're not happy. Obviously you can lift off some. Let's just come further down. I think that needs a bit more blue in it, to be honest, just to tuck it. So I'm going to drop in uh, a little bit of indigo behind. I can go for a far bluier purple. Yeah, I think that's better. Trying to do one layer. I mean, I may go back and adjust, but generally trying to do one layer just to keep everything, say, fresh. I'm going to drop a bit of green in there to tie in and blend that into the stem so it doesn't look too stuck on. Looks like an aubergine sort of. Uh, Going out the back there, possibly not the look I was going for. Let's have a go there. Sort of, I think making it too purple wasn't quite the way forward. So right at the top of the flower it's quite thin, then it becomes quite solid. And so that's what I need to do here. always looking at the shape so tucking these behind varying the color to try and get a sort of sense of depth to it So I'm going to leave 
leave this one because that would end up merging too much so I could come down and do this one tuck that in there and maybe drop in a little bit more sort of shadowy type colour Okay, that's starting to do. We've got one there, we've got one there. I'm going to come and put this one in here. little bit insipid but don't worry because I'm putting in those shadows it all gets a bit darker in here right in the centre I'm just going in there again might need to go a bit darker right in here it's quite nice as pink maybe put some of that here so I'm really starting to build up the layers of these buds and there's another one to go in there there's another to go in there there's one I think to come out this way um, because I've realized that the pencil is showing through the paint I'm going to try and get rid of some of those pencil marks now probably need to do that as I go along now this one is coming out towards us so it needs to be the sort of brighter orange so that's the lovely um, pyrrhal orange that I've been using some of that lovely olive green while it's still wet just at its base and some more purple round to give it a bit of shadow and you can see how that starts to build up that's very dark in here as it comes down but can't do that because that would all merge in with there at the moment so I have to do that. Now I could work out what I'm going to do in here. I wonder if I've got quite a dark green in one of my many 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 um, palettes and yes I have. So that is Perline Green I think from memory. It's a really gorgeous dark green it's um Daniel Smith's color <laughs> they don't seem to have it in many ranges so um just to darken down and really get a bit of shadow which I hope will make some of those pop but you wouldn't want it to be plain so maybe a little bit of purple in there and some of that lovely um olive green I've been using as well. I'll take it up there. Can't go there. Um, just need to be careful of going here. that's in there so always looking to vary your colors even if something looks very dark it's lovely to have a bit bit more variation in there now I'm moving this round and looking um, really to find the prettiest buds and the, because 
it's obviously been in the garden and it's battered by the wind and the rain so just to find a bud that you like to give you an idea if you need it um, this needs I'm going to just soften that edge it's going to come into a bud but I don't want that too hard hard an edge so this is quite an odd way for me to paint this is a lot more careful than I would usually be <laughs> um, but that's no bad thing it's it's good to sometimes challenge yourself to paint in a, a different way just need to drop that onto the stem and use that thirsty brush just to get soft soft edges okay I'm gonna dry that and then carry on working and work my way down to here okay, let's see where I've got up to so here is my very 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 big red hot poker so I think that's most of the watercolour done and it is dry and what I want to show you is how I plan to use the pen and I'm going to start using the pen down in this area because I've actually done this quite loosely I guess because it was at the end and I was starting to feel a bit tired that's one reason but also it's a lot paler down the bottom so this is where the pen has a big role to play I've got these uh, Unipin pens they are waterproof so should I need to go back and do any extra little bits of watercolour that's fine um, very fine I've selected a 0.3 and a 0.1 because I don't want the line to be overly dominant I want you to see that gorgeous colour and the shape which will tell you what it is and then when you come closer you'll see a little bit of detail and, and so forth I think that's going to be particularly important down on these sort of stamen and things so Yesterday I did a little online workshop with a, an artist whose work I really like um, called Kay Elliott. Um, so some of this takes um, influence, I think is what I would say, from Kay. Um, just checking the size of that. I just say it's 0.3 but it looks a bit... No, it is 0.3. Okay, cool. Just double checking. So um, usually I'm not a great fan of outlining work because I just think it's a bit tedious. <laughs> However, on this occasion I am because I'm going to use it to strengthen in a very smooth and continuous line the bits I want. So I'm using a 0.3 on the outline. And I will use a point one where I feel it's necessary. So I'm really observing. So if I happen to have got some of the shape wrong, then I can still put it right at this point. So Again, I'm going for my smooth outline that disappears under the, this thing. And I've got to think carefully how I'm going to do this. And observe, observe, observe. So this, I don't know what it is, so there's a long, thin bit <laughs> that's the technical botanical word long thin bit and then you've got these stamen and I need to look really closely in fact so closely I may have to take my glasses off yeah they have got little lines which I think would be good to put in So 
and then they are joined on. flower like that. Hmm. I think that's okay. And then each of these at the bottom has got lines that come up. And remember this is a natural form so it's not straight. Make, make it a little more organic. This line can go like that. Then, if I want, I can also just put lines up right through there. Any sort of folds, I could put a few folds and creases in, in if I want to, to pull out every single bit. So, this one. Remember to change round. So we want a slightly heavier line for the outside edge. Also use this to disguise any pencil marks that I don't want showing up. If I can. Right. Now we've got again another of those bits. To make this quite a dominant one, so I'm going to put extra leaves here like that. Can you see how it just makes it jump forward? These come out of there. That would be nice. These maybe go in. So it's quite fun doing this stage because it's all drawing and making sense of what you've got there paint wise just crisping up some of the paint that you might have in place if you need to. So with some of these I may go back in right at the end with a tiny bit of watercolour just to to maybe say pick out these where I, where I haven't. Um, I might, I might not. Just need to see what it looks like at the end and um, whether I'm happy with it. Right, I have the whole of my huge red hot poker to do and to outline and to develop. So I'm going to carry on and I'll uh, show you how it all turns out. I've put in all the ink that I think I will need at the moment. You can see that there. And I've identified a few areas where I think I might need a little more um, colour. Over here it should be a bit more solid. Um, and down the bottom I want some bright splashes of yellow on some of these stamen. So because my ink was waterproof it's very easy just to do that. Um, and it really is just little little dashes of of colour where you think you might need them. 
hands. Maybe not being too precise either. Um, I say this as a, a painting is a lot more precise than I would usually be with my line work. Hmm, nothing wrong with that because it's fun to do something different. But maybe I'll just loosen it up a bit by um, missing a few of, of these uh, and not being too careful with where some of that goes. So with pen and wash it's not a case of oh you do all the wash first then all the pen or indeed the other way round. This is the point where you want to look and think do I need to strengthen a line, darken any areas, um, do anything else. So I'm going to make a good consideration, maybe just put it to one side, I think maybe that needs to be there, just to one side and maybe look at it a little bit later to make sure with those fresh eyes is this right is this finished the other thing you could consider doing if you need to is darkening some of the um, shadows within those bell like flowers so could go in and darken say in here or even maybe use a little bit of blue I quite like the blue that I've got dotted round, so I might you know, go in there. That, that could work. See, but you don't want to over over fiddle um, and get too hung up because it's you're trying to keep a certain amount of freshness in your watercolour and, and interest. that in and darken that up. Right I think we're finished now. Um, here's the finished piece. I'll take a photograph so it can uh, you can see it. I ended up putting a little bit more shadow in some areas to get those buds to look a little rounded. You'll see that there's some little bit of splatter that I put, I just couldn't resist it. I want to keep it very clean, but I have to confess there was a funny mark on my paper up here that was something sticky and I couldn't get it off. So uh, I went for a bit of a disguise job. You've got to respond to what's happening and that's what was happening. So that's my finished piece. I hope you've enjoyed that as a process. This process of painting and then outlining and bringing out the details with, with the ink. So hope you've enjoyed that and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!